one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and I'd like a moment of silence, please. Thank you. We're going to start off our joint meeting with the Affordable Housing Trust and the Economic Development Industrial Corporation. But before we do that, I'm going to give a, have Wayne give a little insight on our housing trust and how it became housing trust. Wayne? Thank you, Carol. Um, the housing trust came into existence through a Article 19 of the May 2006 town meeting. And in that meeting, it was establishing the Affordable Ho Housing Trust. And in that, we decided uh, as selectmen on November 22nd, um, the initial meeting of the, of the trust would be made up of the uh, chair of the board of selectmen, vice chair, and all selectmen, along with a member of the uh, Mashpee Housing Authority, the EDIC, and Affordable Housing Committee, and a Finance Committee member. Uh, that was done on the 22nd. The trust itself was, um, uh, the declaration of the trust uh, happened uh, in uh, January 1st um, of, I'm, I'm sorry, January 14th of 2019. So that's where we are with the trust. That's how it was set up. That's how initially was done. And uh, that hasn't changed. The trust is um, virtually made up of all five selectmen and then those four members, which I said at large. They, um, we do have the minutes up, I believe, on uh, the selectmen's page. Uh, there has been discussion about maybe moving it to a separate page so that people have readily uh, access to it. So that's what we're looking at now, but that's the initial setup. Thank you. <clears throat> so we're going to start our joint meeting with Affordable Housing Trust, the Economic Development Corporation. And we're going to have a discussion and approval of the EDIC site feasibility study at 108 Commercial Street for affordable slash workforce housing. It's amazing how long it's taken to get to this point, but we're here. And I'm going to start the meeting off. Alan? Thank you. Um, well, I um, think this is an excellent opportunity that we have before us. Um, and uh, now that the land has been transferred to, um, uh, approved for transferring to the, to the um, trust, I think it's time to move on to the first step, which is the feasibility study, yeah. um, which would give us an idea of just what uh, are the possible development options for the site and any constraints will be um, exposed, all of which will go toward getting better uh, proposals at the competitive stage when we issue the RFP and get responses to that. I've looked through the uh, RFQ. I think it's fine. Uh, it does what it needs to do. It's, um, uh, I believe, uh, modeled closely after the RFP that our RFQ that we use for uh, 950 Falmouth Road, yeah. uh, now Redbrook Village, um, and um, uh, I would um, I like to see us uh, approve that tonight. Our EDIC committee has decided to pay for the feasibility study, so we did not have to go before town meeting to get approval to use money uh, from CPC. Um, so I need a vote. I need a motion and a vote. I'll make a motion to, unless there's any other discussion, to proceed with the approval of the EDIC site feasibility study for 108 Commercial Street for affordable and workforce housing. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Hallelujah. Here we go. Thank you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Make a adjourn. motion to adjourn the uh, joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen or the Affordable Housing Trust. Second. Roll call. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That gentlemen. was a short meeting. <laughs> Thank you for your and turn. thank you for the ED, <laughs> thank you for the EDIC members for being here too. Oh, thank no, you. <laughs> okay, the minutes discussion and approval of the following Monday, November 1, 2021, regular session. I make a motion we approve the November 1st regular session minutes. Second. Roll call. Yes. 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 Thank you. Appointments and hearings. Public comment. No. Thank you. Discussion and approval of a 2020 re presenting. Pre Is Debbie here? Wayne? Debbie Demi? That's it. not here. Is she in her office? She wasn't in today, was she? She was supposed to be here. I'm going to okay. hold it for a little we'll bit. We'll hold it until. Yeah, okay, we're going to. Uh, just skip over that. Yes, I'm going to. We'll hold it open. We're going to convene a joint meeting with the town seal committee. Would you just give us a little history of who was on the committee? Absolutely. Sure. Okay. I think Brian's going to lead this off, Carol, okay, and I'll, uh, great. I'll step in at the appropriate time. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Brian. Good evening, Board of Selectmen, uh, residents. Um, so first, a citizen's petition article was filed by myself, Brian Whedon, to replace the town of Mashby Seal. The petition appeared on the May 6, 2019 town meeting warrant as article number 32. The article passed unanimously to give direction to the Board of Selectmen to lead the project to change the town seal. In a memo sent to the Board of Selectmen by Town Manager Rodney Collins on December 12, 2019, he provided the following recommendations. The Board of Selectmen established an ad hoc advisory committee for the purpose of preparing a recommendation for a new town seal. Such committee would consist of one selectman who would also act as chairperson. The start. The Board of Selectmen voted to appoint the Town Seal Committee as follows. Selectman David Whedon serves as the chair of the committee. Terry Cook, the Town Administrative Assistant, served as the recording secretary for the committee. Town Planner, Evan Laher. Kathy Mahoney, the Library Director. Patricia DeBoer, the School Superintendent. The Historical Commission representative, Joan Tavares of Ant, and the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe representative, Brian Weed, and myself. The committee's objective and process to plan, review, design, and recommend a draft town seal to be presented to the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen will discuss the draft town seal and will decide if the Board wishes to place an article on a town meeting warrant for the approval of the proposed town seal by the voters. At this time, I'll turn it over to Evan to talk about the next steps and actions that were taken. Uh, so upon the creation of the Town Seal Committee, uh, we were tasked first with uh, making an assessment of what would be of pinnacle interest of the community to portray on the Town Seal in light of uh, the intents and purposes of why Brian submitted the petition in the first place. Uh, so we collectively designed a survey which was used to solicit feedback from the community with regard to the eventual design of the town seal. And at, at uh, that time also congruently the town manager initiated an RFP uh, for us to um, work with a creative design agency to help us in the design of the town seal or the proposed new town seal. This is just a, a snapshot of um, an early iteration of the survey. Uh, we really were just asking the community under these categories um, not to rank them, but to choose their three top priorities. So we asked them to look at uh, Wampanoag history and symbols, towns, the town's history post the 1870 incorporation, notable person or people, local economy, native plants and animals, wildlife habitat or landmarks, water and water bodies, 
notable buildings in architecture, and we provided uh, an opportunity for someone to fill in an other category uh, to give some direction as to what we were seeking uh, from uh, respondees. Uh, you know, Wampanoag history and symbols, we provided examples like wampum and the eagle feather, um, uh, local economies such as shell fishing, cranberry industry, herring fishing, uh, water and water bodies, obviously, Mashpee Wakebee, Mashpee River, Papanissa Bay, etc. We had a decent response rate. Um, the, the survey was issued uh, both in paper at the library if someone had wanted to, and Kathy collected that those responses and inputted them to our Google form. Otherwise, it was posted on the town webpage, advertised on the social media pages, um, and folks responded accordingly. Um, you can see that there was general significant interest in, in portraying Wampanoag history and symbols, plants and animals, native plants and animals, and wildlife habitat and landmarks, or excuse me, water and water bodies as the three primary criteria that folks wanted to see incorporated in the town seal and as important features of the town that we wanted to include in the design. This is just a, a, a tabulation of our results 260 folks prioritized Wampanoag history and symbols, 200 prioritized native plants and animals, and 148 prioritized water and water bodies. I think but just before I proceed, I wanted to note that as a committee, early on as we met, before we even worked with Pierce Cote, we, we brain, brainstormed our own ideas, and each of us presented our own little sketches and doodles. Um, and they all incorporated water. They all incorporated uh, Wampanoag history and symbols. They all included some form of plants and animals. So we were really on the same page, I think, with the community before we even got started, which was an interesting thing to note. So with that, after we had uh, conducted a survey, we had ascertained some community feedback, we had discussed prioritized as a, priorities as a committee, and the town manager's office had issued an RFP, uh, Pierce Cote, a Cape Cod-based design firm, was selected to help in the design of the town seal. And in May of 2021, uh, Pierce Cote joined uh, with us on board uh, in our meetings to begin the design process. And so with that, I think I'd like to introduce uh, two of our colleagues from Pierce Cote who were um, instrumental in, in you know, bringing our, the committee's vision, the town's vision to fruition. It was a real pleasure to work with them. Uh, it was a you know, real, real opportunity, a real pleasure to work on this particular project, and I, I'd like to extend a big thanks to them for doing that. Um, so again, uh, here are the, the three objectives, the three top priorities that we wanted to include in the town seal. And I'll hand it off to Brad Schiff from Pierce Cote and um, Amanda Sellers, right? Uh, who was on the design staff, so thank you. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Board of Selectmen, Select Board, excuse me, and uh, Mashpee Town residents, uh, Brad Schiff from Pierce Cote and Amanda Sellers from Pierce Cote. Uh, Evan, am I just uh, clicking this forward or? It's a scroll down, right? It's a scroll down. Oops. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be great. Okay. So uh, what I want to talk about is a, a little bit about the process which we uh, pursued in terms of uh, working with the, uh, sound, the uh, town seal committee, which we enjoyed very, very much. Um, what we first did was we held the brainstorming roundtable with all of them. Try to get all of the, from the direction which they provided, but get what their thoughts are. You know, it's one thing to talk about the, the Wampanoag a history of symbolism, but what does that mean? So get a whole list of them. From that, we developed a value proposition. Now, a value proposition is where all marketing, communication, and design is created. I'll show that to you in just a few uh, minutes, but essentially it's one sentence which literally uh, provides the foundation of developing uh, the creative piece. Uh, the Town Seal Committee gave us their mandates. Very simply, the do's and the don'ts, and we have those listed and we've, developed, we've utilized that, uh, made sure that that was covered in, uh, in our, our creative. At that point, we, de we uh, developed the initial concepts. Now, um, as you'll see, there was a lot of different elements, and, and, and you can't put everything that you'd want to be able to put in in terms of brainstorming it comes up, because sometimes the seal, as you all know, can be that small. So you've got to be able to make sure that it can be a everything which is going to be designed that size or much larger. 
And we developed dozens and dozens and dozens of different concepts. Finally, what we did was we focused on the design preferences, preferences that the Town Sill Committee uh, had and then drilled down finally till we got the final design. What we're gonna show you in just a few minutes is the recommendation of the Mashpee Town Seal Committee. So um, let's proceed here. So uh, when we first met with them, uh, the committee said, you know, we asked them, why, does this, why is the seal gonna be changed in the first place? And they said, well, it's the, the current look is a reminder of pressure, of oppression, it's not flattering depiction of Native Americans and very offensive design of the arm and sword over to the Native American. So with that, we started uh, our brainstorming session and we first talked about Wampanoag history. What does that mean? I won't go through all of these, but uh, again, the, the elements which were communicated was the Wampanoag history, the stewards of the land, appreciated appreciation of national resources and environment, and uh, uh, Mash be the great place of waters. Wampanoag symbols, the sun, the people of the first light, uh, the wampum belt, the eagle uh, flies highest, uh, closest to the creator and sun. Uh, circle meaning all people are equal, and the eagle feather used in ceremonies. In plants, very prominent were the red cedar and white cedar uh, trees, animals, uh, such as eagle and birds. And water, with many different uh, uh, examples of water. And again, that was one of the directives to be able to include that in our design. And then my favorite question when we go through brainstorming is the last one. And we said is, if so, if you summed up Mashpee in one word, what would it be? And I saw a lot of smiles on uh, everybody's face. And I'm gonna read all of these because it, it really was so useful and I think really helped us create the value proposition. Mash be in one word, community, welcoming, environment, connected, beautiful, tribe, a caring place, unity, dynamic, respectful, and a better place. I thought those were great, great words that summed up uh, the community. And I see some nods of heads right there. So what we did, was we then took all of that and created a value proposition. A value proposition, again, is in marketing communication, that one sentence that sums up, essentially, uh, and creates the foundation of, uh, for the springboard to develop any creative. And I'll read it. The town seal is to clearly communicate that Mashpee is a welcoming and caring community, which connects and honors the tradition of the Wampanoag tribe as stewards of its land and beauty to the town moving forward in unity to greet the next day. Wait, how do you create that and take that thought, which is a great thought, and which, which the committee felt and approved this, summed up what it is that we were trying to do and put it into a design? Well, first we went back and said, what are the do's and the don'ts, the mandates? The do's, and I won't read all of them, but make sure it's an environmental theme. Make sure you include a body of water, something that honors the tradition. Make sure it's a timeless design because they want this to last for the next 200 or 300 years. That sound good? Okay. Sunshine and light, bringing together in harmony, greeting the sun, using the original spelling of the town of Mashpee and uh, using the warp and a word for welcome. And then the don'ts, don't show any hostility. There was Latin in the, in the current one. <laughs> Don't show any buildings. And you don't have to list Barnstable County. So with that, we went through the process and spent all together, I believe three months, uh, working through this, showed many, many different designs, and I will say that they were a great, great client to work with. And so I'm gonna let Amanda uh, reveal the proposed uh, seal for the town of Mashpee. So taking all of what has, excuse me, taking all of what has been said about um, between everything that the Mashpee residents has said about what they would like to see in, a, in their seal uh, to represent who they are and also uh, taking our value proposition and the research that we have done, uh, we've come up with this design. And um, 
the just to go through, um, of course, the top three things that we wanted to represent. Uh, for starters, the border represents the wampum beads. Um, we show a single uh, white bead to to represent the in, in its inside of that Wampanoag mash pea wamp, mash pea Wampanoag purple. Uh, the rising sun uh, represents both a new day and a new start, and it also represents the Wampanoag tribe being the people of First Light, uh, which is very important. And the Wampanoag tribe also holds symbolism in the the eagle um, flying closest to the sun and the Creator. Um, the Mashpee River was chosen as the body of water um, because it shows a connection to something larger. Um, you know, it's, it, I think that is an important aspect of Mashpee as well, is that the, the connection uh, was something that we wanted to capture in, 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 a, in, a, in some form. So, uh, welcome to Mashpee is written in Wampanoag language to honor the past and while also welcoming the future of Mashpee. And the colors were, were chosen to represent the harmony um, and, and the beauty of Mashpee, um, showing, representing that, the new day, um, the sunrise. So, so yes, yeah, so this is the proposed uh, seal for, that the Mashpee, that this, thank you. First, first I wanna thank the committee. Congratulations, all your input. It's all there. You did a great job. And the company did the rest. They took everything, every thought that you did into consideration. Thank you. Now, discussion amongst the board? I, I'll go first. I, I mean, I, I like it, and I'm assuming so it's welcome to Mashpee is... That's the translation of those, okay? That was gonna be my only question, but I got it on that last slide, so. I think the presentation great. was great. I love it. I think it's great. Good? Tom? Very well done. Did a great job. They did, excellent. Do we need a vote? A motion? Okay. Um, the next step that uh, we would do is uh, bring it uh, before town meeting. Oh, we do. And that will be done in May for May. I'll make a motion we include an article seeking, you know, adoption of the town seal at the annual town meeting. Second. Roll call? Yes. 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 And yes. Thank you, everybody. Madam Thank Chair, I, yes. I too would like to say thanks to the committee because I know that there were a lot of uh, hours put in and uh, you did a tremendous job, tireless, and I also want to thank the consultant that yes. was uh, used for the purposes of bringing this all together. Thank you to all of you. Great job. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Well done. Well done. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> We're going to go back to um, Go back to the discussion and approval of the 2020 representing Precinct, town clerk yeah. Debbie. Uh, Demi is not here. Not here, but I think the memo it, pretty much describes it. Does. It does. Yeah. So. It does. So it's the same map that we sanctioned last time at town meeting. In our meeting, it's just <clears throat> apparently the written description didn't reflect the changes to the map that we saw. So. Right. She's just resubmitting the package. So I'd make a motion. It was just a te technical. technical. Yeah, I'd make a motion that we um, <coughs> adopt the 2020 re-precincting plan for the town of Mashpee provided by the Mashpee town clerk. Uh, I second that. Okay, roll call. Just, yes. uh, I'm sorry, just, discussion? Yeah, just for clarification, I just, just so that the town's aware this re-precincting, we're basically getting shifted off of right. No, this is different. Is this different? This is different. This is our voting precincts. This is our precincts. So basically, it's combining the area of, um, if I recall it correctly, the right. west side of Mashpee Wakeby is now connected. Okay. You and I are now in the same precinct. Precinct. Oh, that's, that's a problem. That's a problem. <laughs> um, and it just pushes, it counts to the fact there's some oddities in the, in the shape of the precincts that makes them more rational in the middle of town. So it took population away, kicked us together, and then moves down. 
So, but as, as part of this, I, I know it's not part of this necessarily, but if people didn't attend the town meeting, they probably are not aware that we are now part of the Falmouth Bourne. Yeah, so the, the Senate district. Just so everyone's aware. That's the Senate awesome. district that included Mashpee, the Cape and Islands district, Mashpee was the westernmost town in the Senate district. And that Mashpee has been moved from that district to the one that um, is um, Upper Cape and Southeastern Mass. So Mashpee now joins Falmouth, Bourne, um, a portion of Sandwich, and Plymouth. Uh, represent the district that's currently represented by Senator Sue Moran from Falmouth. Right. So, so that, that has nothing to do with Right, this. that doesn't have anything to do with it. And it doesn't go into effect until January 1 of 23. So Senator Sia remains our senator until um, the redistricted election occurs in November of 22. Gotcha. So I need a vote on the package in its entirety for the representative. Yeah, sorry for okay. a second. And you did the second. Roll call? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. In your office. Yes. Okay, a discussion and approval of the following special events and temporary sign permit. Uh, did you take a vote on that? Yeah. Yes, we just did. I'm sorry about that. Our annual chamber Christmas parade, which is Saturday, December 11, 2021, at 5.30 to 7.30, the Mashpee Commons with the Mashpee Chamber of Commerce. Katie, would you come up? <laughs> she did. She promised she was going to wear her hat. I see the lights were going up today at the Rotary, so everybody's getting excited. You're not wearing a cape, though. I'm not wearing a cape. The cape is for you. <laughs> um, Katie Atchison, Mashpee Chamber of Commerce. Um, and as Carol has stated, the Mashpee Chamber Christmas Parade, the 15th annual, um, would be held on Saturday, December 11th at 5.30 kickoff within Mashpee Commons with a rain slash snow date of the following day, Sunday, uh, December 12th, 5.30 kickoff. We'll have free hot chocolate throughout the Commons. And we've changed the route to alleviate traffic to keep the parade inside the Commons this year. Um, with kickoff at the green in the Mashpee Commons, weaving through the Commons and ending on Job's Fishing, where everyone will have plenty of places to go, so we don't have any real traffic jams. Um, we have some marching bands signed up. We have Santa booked. We have um, some of our dignitaries already, but anyone that wants to participate can go to mashpeechamber.com. There's, there's more information than you need on there. So we'll be um, accepting entries from the public now until the week before the parade. And everything's been approved from the different uh, departments. So do I have a, a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Roll call, John? Yes. 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 Thank, Thank you, you very Katie. Much. Okay, discussion and approval of the following appointments and reappointments to the following. Shellfish Commission Associate Member, Jamie Pacino, Patinko, term to expire June 30th, 2022. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call? Yes. 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 Cultural Council, David Ingle, Edwina Johnson, Graham, terms to expire September 30th, 2024. Motion? Second. Roll call? Yes. 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 Thank you. Discussion and approval of the Board of Selectmen meeting schedule for January through June 2022. If anybody has any questions, let the office know. I think it looks fine. Do we need a... Yeah, we, we do need vote approval. It okay. Make a motion. We approve the, uh, the meeting schedule as presented. Second. Roll call. Yes. 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 Thank you. Communications and correspondence. None. Old um, business. Let me bring oh, sorry. just one thing up. We the board did get um, answers to two questions, I believe, from the Air Force um, cleanup program. Rose Forbes. She broke. Her answer's out. Uh, it was specific about the PFAS-related contamination. 
but the other 37 questions remain unanswered or unaddressed <laughs> by the guard. Okay, additional compacts. Liaison reports. Don? Um, pretty much all quiet. All quiet? Yeah. Okay. Not so much trauma that I can speak of at this point. Mm -hmm. County government is always a challenge. Okay. John? Nothing. <clears throat> Uh, just ongoing sewer commissions working hard, meeting regularly. They meet again this Thursday, making progress towards getting design specs ready to go to bid. Um, and I'll remind the board, we've got a um, <clears throat> Selectman's Association meeting Friday morning. The subject is PFAS in public water supplies. Andy Marks is speaking as, long, as well as the Brewster Water Superintendent. So if you want to learn about that, good meeting. Great. Okay. Um, I have one. The um, EDIC is hosting a job fair, which will be held December 7th at the library from 11 to 3. Um, there'll be tables set up with businesses that need help desperately, and there'll also be people there to help you update your resume. It looks like it's going to be pretty full, from what I understand. <clears throat> um, and it should be very interesting. Hopefully, some of the businesses. Uh, and this is not just for little retail shops. It's professional. Um, we're look a lot of businesses uh, that are professional are looking for professional people also. So, Carol, was that communicated to, like, all the local businesses? It will be, yes. Okay. Uh, it's in... Uh, conjunction with the chamber. Okay. Uh, Katie's on it, and she will be sending. Okay. That's great. And we, um, I think it would be a, a good turnout if anybody's looking for a certain type of job. And now we're going to have the town manager updates. Rodney. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just as a reminder, the next regulatory board roundtable meeting date is Monday, December 13th. Uh, in terms of COVID cases, as of Monday today and over the weekend, there were seven new positive COVID-19 cases and no deaths, and there are currently 22 uh, cases in Mashpee. Uh, no cases have moved out of isolation. The, the current case count stands at 1,181. And just for the board's info, uh, the fiscal year 23 budget Hearings will be starting shortly, uh, so we will obviously get that uh, agenda out uh, to the select board and to the finance committee for those that want to uh, participate. Thank you. And obviously, I can't have a quorum, but right. um, I know that uh, there are various liaisons mm -hmm. and uh, assignments, and uh, we expect that review to start very shortly and all of the requests are in from the department heads. Yeah. Is that it? Do you want a motion on executive session? I have a motion for executive uh, session. Make a motion. <clears throat> Please. The board go into executive session pursuant to general law chapter 30A, section 21, A2, and 3 respectively to discuss strategy with respect to negotiation of personal services contracts for town manager Rodney C. Collins, assistant town manager Wayne E. Taylor, and police chief Scott Carline, and two, to discuss strategy regarding pending litigation with the Conservation Law Foundation. The Board of Selectmen will reconvene an open session. I do declare that an open meeting on these issues may have a detrimental effect on the litigation and negotiating position of the town. Thank you. Your vote. Yes. Roll call. Yes. 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 